So it's coming together now, isn't it? We've managed to get our main data tables in. We're starting to make sense of it. But how can we push it forward? How do we actually pull it together? So we're gonna then spin out some reports at the top. What do we need to do next? All right, everyone, welcome along. Weekend work, eh? So here we are yet again, looking at a part one report. So where have we got up to now, eh? We've managed to get the data flows built, right? We've got the idea of replicating it so that we've now got all our data coming together into one set of data flows, right? Champion, isn't it? So the next step, remember from our consultancy days, is that we need to start to model and shape the data so that we can then validate it and visualize it, which is what we'll do next week. So how can we start on that modeling piece, right? And do you remember one of the things I said, what we were doing as we were getting there? So if we come on through these, as we looked at the replication side, yeah, we hit something, didn't we? We were gonna end up going a little bit backwards, Right? Because what, we're got, what we've got is we've got weekly results and we've got latest results. We haven't got people, but we get people from those. So we're almost going to have that join, aren't we? That we've got the idea of the, the events page is going to give us all the events as an event table. And then we're going to get the second big dimension table that we need, our participants table, is going to be derived from our fact table. Now, this is something you do it a lot, right? This is part of the denormalization process that you'll do. And you'd be saying, well, why would I need to do that? That's stupid. I didn't understand. Why would I add a step, make my life more complicated? And you do it for the simple reason that making your life more complicated there makes your life simpler elsewhere. You see, let's have a look and see what I mean, yeah? Cotton Hour in a Power BI service, have a look, see what's happening, and then we'll go into Power BI desktop. All right, so here we are. <clears throat> okay, got all my data here now. We've got the events, one to 35, so that's all the events that have happened. Okay, we've got the history, and we've got the latest results, right? Latest results, you make up with the latest results. In practice, what I find is that sometimes on the Saturday, when the results are submitted, there can be a gap of about half an hour between latest results appearing and them actually appearing in the event history. So given that people go, oh, no, 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 no. You know, having that in potentially makes life easier. It's not guaranteed. It's not something you have to go, oh, it's a great idea. It's what I've done. I'm not sold on it. I don't know. So let's crack on though, okay? Because we've got this done now, haven't we? So how can we take this and turn it into what we've got down here with our part run report that we've already got, okay? What do we need to do? What are the steps that I need to take to start to build this data model up? So let's go, yeah? We would go over to Power BI Desktop and start. Power BI Desktop. What can we do to make this work for us? First thing, of course, we've got to do is get some data. So how do we get the data? Now, I know, right, for a lot of you, you're sitting there going, well, I get you've got all these data flows. I don't understand what I do with them. Right? They're all separate. That's not going to work. So if we come in here and have a look at this, you'll see that, yes, I have to add each one individually. And honestly, that's annoying. Okay. It would be possible to do this and combine them all in another data flow, especially if, well, if you've got premium, premium capacity availability or you're running premium per user, you'd be able to do all this. In theory, you could probably manage a small country of park runners using premium capacity if you wanted. It's not like... There's not that much legwork that goes into the actual running of the reports once they're in. 
right? But we'll go through, we'll do all these, yeah. And you'll see, you know, it's, for all I'm saying, this is difficult. I've done our 35 while I've been nattering on to you. So it can't be that difficult, can it? Right, and then we want the event history, which is this is going to be our all events table, isn't it? And then we need the latest results. Okay, so we're gonna, I think we want to keep the latest results. Just, we're going to give it a try. Let's see what it looks like. So we're going to transform the data. Remember, we'll always transform data. That's step one. You've always got to transform the data. Okay, let's bring this through. So the first thing that we need to do is let's take all of these and let's move them into a group called events. Okay, I'm just doing this for my own peace of mind. Okay, I don't think you can do it. No, you can't. So again, we have to go through each of these and tell it I don't want it to load, which is, again, ah, it's painful. When you're first setting these up, it's painful. Okay, be the first to admit it. Okay, so we're going to do that through all of them. Tell you what, come back when I've done. All right, so there you go. Done those for all those, haven't we? Sensible thing then. I'm going to pick on number one, right? There's a reason, but there's method to be madness. And I'm going to hit, I want to append tables or append queries, append all as new, okay? I'm going to say three or more tables. The reason why I picked one was because I wanted to pick one, but I'm going to do that, remove the selection, and I'm going to pick all the rest, highlight them, and add, okay? So we've now got tables 1 to 35 in there is this append table. This is gonna be, I'm gonna call this, this is gonna be one of our base tables, isn't it? Those of you hang around me enough, you know, I like me base tables, right? Like a bit of base in everything, of course. Okay, so we've suddenly, we've got something that we can start to use and reuse and build on and get to that next step. And the first thing I want to do is I want to deal with these age categories, okay? So age categories is a big thing, okay? I'm this age, am I male, am I female? There is now um, a third gender. I'm not quite sure what part I'm going to put them in as yet because I haven't seen them in any of the results yet that I've, I've, that sounds really wrong. I haven't seen it used in any of the results that I've processed yet, but it's one I'm keeping an eye on to make sure that we can cover it in the results. But what we'll do is we're going to create a groupings table. What I did was I did this a while ago was I copied them all out and I broke it down as to what it was and things. And I'm not going to go through the copy it out into Excel, do la la, do this, make it right, do what you need to do. Right. But what I did, what I came back with at the end, really, let me find it here. I think with me, blank query gone. There it is. New blank query, advanced editor. Do this, right? And you, I don't understand, right? It's not overly taxing. So what I did was I built in Excel this. The right? category, the gender, the age group, the minimum age and the maximum age, because we're going to go through and piece it together. Because what you kind of want to do, well, what I was thinking was, you want to get to that point, don't you? Where you're like, oh, this one is. Okay. It makes sense in my mind. Hopefully, I've not completely messed it up. Okay. But I think this is going to work for us. So what we're going to do is we can then, we've got that. So this is going to be our age groupings, isn't it? Okay. Now, the nice thing that you can do now, if you see, I've got a category binding in there, like a, an index kind of thing. So what we can do is we can make things easier for ourselves because we could replace that with the band. So we're gonna replace it in base, so age category with the band. We could join right here. Yeah. This is one of those interesting topics. So it depends on who you speak to. I prefer to replace them with an ID, just 
makes more sense. I'm like numbers make sense for, for those kind of joints or for joints wherever you can. If you look at what goes on under the hood within Power BI, within the, the, the Vertipak engine, you'll find it shouldn't make that big a difference. It shouldn't make a difference at all. Um, and as you can see from even my language I'm using, I'm not convinced. <laughs> no, that's me. Hey, so I'll, I would go through and I would change this in my main results that I was doing. Okay. That'd be me. I would change it. The next things that you can look at really is around what are we going to do in terms of the runner club? So we've got these running clubs here, right? We've got the park run ID, which is what we're going to use to join the participant to. And we've got a name, haven't we? So what we're really going to need to do is to take these two columns and keep these as something separate, isn't it? So what we'll do is, remember, this is my base. So I'm going to tell it, I don't want to load it. We're going to create a reference, not a duplicate. Sorry. And we're going to create a reference. We're going to click reference. And this is now going to become, so what do we need then? Four people. Right, what are the key things we're gonna to have to have? Right, gotta have Parker and ID. Okay, gotta have it. That's the important thing. Right, and let's bring in a person as well. Okay, tempting to say is let's look at time maybe. See, because we can potentially like filter down to their biggest time, their quickest time. Sorry, something like that. But let's start simple. Okay, start really simply with just these two bits of information. So what we'll do is we'll take those two, the right click and remove the other columns. Okay, because these are the two bits. This is really what we we have to start with. Make sure park run ID is a number, the number. Okay, and then what we're going to do is remove duplicates. So we've got our list. These are the people who've taken part, okay? which is amazing, right? Straight. Quickly, easily, we've built that list, right? It's about 2,000 people in there, okay? So we've got our groupings in terms of what group were they? We've got our participants, so we can now start to look at things like information for the participant, right? In practice, you'll find a lot of this, it, you might, this is where you're gonna have that discussion point or the arguments in terms of what should we put in here, okay? Because there's a lot more that you can do than just this, right? Because what we've got is we've got a nice distinct list of IDs here, right? And this is really where you want to start. This is kind of what you want to do. Potentially though, have we done this right? So there's another way to do this, isn't there? So how about we try this? Okay, rather than removing the columns, what about if we try grouping by? Hmm. Group by, you say. Now this is actually where, what I might do is let's do this bit first, okay? So let's bring this in. Let's merge in the query for our groupings. based on category and category. Yeah, and hopefully it'll come back and say, aye, why aye, 100% match up. Jobs are good, yeah, 5,000, pretty much near. You need to find out the, the age group we're missing. We're missing one, definitely. Expand that. Let's keep the category band. Okay, oh, left the thing tick, didn't I? Right. So it's not a problem. We can click on that, tell it we didn't want the category band at the top. Okay. So we've got that now. All right. So let's go through and let's group this as a way of getting rid of columns or changing columns. So what do we need to do? 
Oh, this to be a percentage, don't I? Be a percentage. Position. Let's make the position a number. You'll figure out what I'm doing when you start seeing it. Okay, so we've got all this done now, haven't we, right? So let's think, what do we need to do next? What's the next bit that we need? So we can have a look at this, can't we? We can say, right, if I say, Group by, we're going to group by two things, aren't we? We're going to group by the park run ID and the person. And what we want next, let's do a count rows. Jasmine Dean Park Runs. Simple, count rows. Add an aggregation. Min age grade percentage. Max age grade percentage. We're going to add a group in. I tell you what, let's add a group in here for your club as well. Your club's going to be some people, aren't they? Lowest time. Yeah, so it's going to be your max time. Quickest time. It's going to be your min time, isn't it? Okay, so all of these we can do, can't we? So we're going to okay, and suddenly it's going to. Spin this around, isn't it? So it'll take it a while, it'll think it through. Okay, and we'll get these. Oh, we need to use finish time, didn't we? For them. But remember, it's not a problem, is it? Because we can go. Min finish time. Max. Oh. Finish time. And hopefully I've spelled those right and it's going to come through. Yeah, we go. Okay. So straight away, we're starting to pull these through. You know, we've got some interesting stuff coming through already, haven't we? We've built this table for people. So we've now got people. We've got the events. We've got this all events telling us everything we need to know about an event. The data took place on the people that we had, the volunteers that were involved all those core bits of data that we're gonna need. So the next thing is gonna to be to start to piece it together and bring it through in Power BI Desktop into an established model. So what have you reckon? Okay, being able to use group by to unpack and restructure a table, okay, is a powerful thing. Effectively, you're converting into a pivot table if you wanna think of it differently or in like more of an Excel, Kind of way of, of doing things, but it's not as bad as, as doing an Excel. Right? You've also seen, and I've used, I do use it an awful lot. I'll be the first to admit, right, when I'm like, oh, I need a data table or something, right, that age groupings. And clearly you can see it's one that it's not perfect because I've missed one. Um, and I'll go through and I'll find out which one that is before and I'll fix that. That's part of it. Right? We'll get to the bottom of it. But what we've built is we've managed to get this piecing, this thing coming together now. We're starting to say, right, okay, we've built now 
the core tables. We've finally got that core table structure done. And that's been only possible because we've done that group by. Right? And I showed you group by versus the let's strip down those two columns that we need. Right? And I, I hope you can see that using group by in the aggregations has got us something that's a lot more, it's going to be a lot better really for us. Is a, this is going to really work and look really good. It, and it will keep working, keep running for us. The interesting thing I was thinking about is that because we've added the aggregation at the club level as well, what you'll get is if somebody changes their running club, it'll actually give you times and information based on when they were at that first running club versus the second. <sighs> Controversial, right? But we'll see. We'll keep going. So I hope we're going to have a great weekend, right? Stay safe, right? We need to stay in. You know, look, it's getting cold out there. Honestly, I'm starting to get a bit cold in me. Just look at them pictures, right? Obviously, I took them. So, right? Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Take care. Ta-da. <laughs>